Have you ever said something under pressure that you wouldn't have normally? Well, imagine that was an action, and a singular person was a country, a nation with an army, a power. The damage is many, many fold. When pushed into a corner, a radical option suddenly becomes viable. A monstrous violation of human rights becomes an acceptable step in a plan. A corrupt leader becomes a savior. When change is needed, sometimes a people set under harsh conditions welcomes any change with open arms. And so it was with World War II, an event that was started by support from a people who were pushed into a corner and who went with the change, an event that was shaped by extreme measures and beliefs, a total war that was the deadliest the earth had ever seen, deadly to not only the soldiers who fought it, but the innocents who stood by. We shall begin in the 1920s. The 20s are a seemingly golden age for America. However, several factors are setting up a perfect collapse. Uneven distribution of wealth has increased the gap between the rich and the poor. Factories and farms are cranking out more goods than are needed. Thus, the oversaturated market decreases demand for these goods. The majority of people buy on credit so that they are in overwhelming debt. These factors aren't bad as long as the times stay good, but it would not be. On October 29th, 1929, the stock market collapsed. Then, companies start falling apart as the items they produce aren't being bought. People start losing their jobs and cannot pay back the debt they are in because of buying on credit. Unemployment skyrockets to a ridiculous 15%, and that's only the percent of people still looking for jobs. Suicide rate goes up during this time as people cannot cope with their losses. Many go hungry as families struggle to provide for themselves. The American people begin to lose faith in their country as the government does little to help them. Desolate groups form communities to support each other. When the American market collapsed, banks pulled their money out of Europe, and countries dependent on trade and American loans began to see their economies fall drastically. Tariffs were put up to keep goods in, and much trade stopped as a result. All across the globe, a depression was spreading. What were countries doing to stop the depression? France was raising pay for its workers and increasing benefits in hopes of keeping workers paid and supported. England was taxing the rich to raise funds and was regulating its currency to maintain the English pound. Germany's economy fell through though, as the government failed to do much but print money and too much of it. The German currency was worth almost nothing. Japan was not affected too much. In America, America's government under Hoover did little, and as a result, people wanted change. So in 1932, Franklin Roosevelt was voted in. Franklin Roosevelt was voted into office in 1932. He came in with a mission to change our country and bring the U.S. out of the Great Depression. Almost immediately, he started churning out programs to stabilize the economy and create jobs. This series of programs were called the New Deal. His plans focused on three main objectives, relief, reform, and recovery. Thus, he enacted the Civilian Conservation Corps program, which created jobs for 250,000 people to fix up bridges and parks and other public works. The Civil Works Administration program created jobs for another 4 million Americans over the span of the Depression. The Treaty of Versailles left Germany and the Central Powers desolated and broken up. When the Great Depression spread to Europe and beyond, many countries' economies suffered, but it was the defeated Central Powers from World War I that suffered the most. Forced to pay off war debts, their economies were drained before the Depression even struck. Thus, the Treaty of Versailles had left a feeling of anger. Countries like Italy and Japan had felt cheated out of land. They had received nothing for their efforts in World War I. Germany and Austria were frustrated at the harsh conditions laid upon them by the treaty. People wanted change, they didn't want a slow recovery. Fascist leaders in Germany, Italy, and Japan offered a quick fix, a way out of the mess. People readily fell into line behind these fascist leaders. Germany under its new leader, the Nazi Adolf Hitler, started testing the waters after seeing how fascist Japan and its conquest of Pacific Islands and China got little to no reaction from the League of Nations. So Nazi Germany annexed Austria and demanded that the Sudetenland be returned to German rule. England gave in as an act of appeasement as long as Germany didn't attack anywhere else. As appeasement failed to subdue the Germans and Germany became increasingly hostile, England and France made agreements that if Poland were attacked by Germany, then they would enter into a war against Germany. They also made a pact that if Greece and the Baltic area were attacked by Italy, then they would declare war upon Italy. China and Asia was for the large part ignored. In 1939, Hitler invaded Poland. France and England declared war on Germany. Hitler's forces spread quickly over Europe, from Poland to the Nordic countries to Germany's north, and down through the Slavic countries. He then pushed west towards France, going along the north coast, and thus past French defenses set up further south. 
French and British troops were forced to evacuate the continent at Dunkirk. Italy invaded North Africa and France, and thus declared war on the United Kingdom and France. The Soviet Union and Germany had a ceasefire in effect. Hitler then launched an attack across the English Channel and into the island itself. He used his aircraft to bomb English cities and was successful until the English developed radar so they could see the attacks coming. The British, though outnumbered, fought the Germans back from England, but still, only England remained against the Axis powers. I hope the United States will keep out of this war. I believe that it will. The United States held on to a strict neutrality when World War II first started. It was in an era of isolationism. Staying out of war was its number one priority. Besides, the US had the Great Depression and its own problems to deal with. As the war went on and the Axis powers spread, the US still held a neutral position. However, Roosevelt enacted the Lend-Lease Act, which included supplying armaments to countries vital to the United States. England and Russia began receiving supplies from the US. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, hoping to get the United States out of the Pacific so that they might claim the resource-rich Philippines, the United States reacted and declared war on Japan and its allies, which included Germany and the other Axis powers. The war affected the United States at home. As it entered war with the Axis powers, all focus was on the war effort. The government had factories converted from cloth to armor, from lipstick to bullet casings. The country was vamped into a war fervor driven by propaganda and drafts. Many men joined the army, leaving women to run the jobs, and these women were allowed more freedoms than they had had before. Mexicans were brought into the country to fill the gaps in the workforce, but were discriminated against in the zoot suit riots. And filled by distrust, the government ordered that Japanese Americans be moved to camps so that they wouldn't pose a threat to national security. When the United States entered the war in 1941, the tide began to turn. Hitler, frustrated at his failed attempt to wipe out the British, launched an attack against the Soviet Union, but was driven back by the cold Russian winter. Allied forces pushed the Axis out of North Africa, and Italy's fascist leader, Mussolini, tried escaping Italy when the tide was turned against him, and was struck down by angry Italian mobs. Then a very large amphibious attack was conducted in Normandy on the day known as D-Day. Amidst giant losses, victory was found for the Allies, who were now into France and the European continent. After much fighting, Allied forces had pushed German forces back into their own country. Hitler, seeing victory slip before his eyes, committed suicide rather than surrender. Germany surrendered in 1945. In the Pacific theater, U.S. forces island hopped around heavily defended islands and attacked weaker Japanese-occupied islands. Losses amounted on both sides, but when the Japanese fleet was damaged at a counter-strike at Midway, the United States started winning. After the victory at Hiroshima, the United States were close enough to begin bombing mainland J Japan. But it seemed that the only way to end the war with Japan was by shocking the people into surrender. There were likely better alternatives, but the extreme hatred between the Japanese and the Americans created an extreme solution. So in early August, the United States of America dropped two atomic bombs, new weapons developed in secret during the war, upon two Japanese cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This singled the final death knell for Japan, and it surrendered. With the Second World War over, the monstrosities committed during began to amount. When the Allies invaded Germany, they ran into camps where thousands of malnourished people were being held, and in these camps were furnaces. When confronted, the German people said they knew nothing about it. So the Jewish people were given a home, their own nation, and Israel, their biblical homeland. Also after the war, the United Nations was formed, and this time it had more power than the negligent League of Nations. More countries were in it, as well as the United States and the Soviet Union, and Germany. However, it was not a fairy tale ending. World War II led directly into a standoff between the two most powerful countries in the world, the United States of America and the Soviet Union. Desperate times had led to the start of World War II, and resulted in extreme consequences. Countless lives were lost, an entire religious group was almost wiped out. Yet, even after the aggressor was defeated, another extreme situation had arisen to take its place. The Cold War. And now the world is left to ponder, should another desperate situation be set up, will history repeat itself? 